This is our host, and today we're answering the question, what if a black hole came close? First things first, what exactly do we mean by close? Because there's two ways to think about this. The first way is thinking about it in terms of a cross-section. Like if a black hole were to fly directly over the Earth or the Earth were to fly directly over a black hole, we can look at the size of the Earth and the distance from the center of the Earth to its surface and then take that and rotate it around into a cross-section, a circle. And then we can ask the question, what would happen if this black hole got within this distance of the Earth? And that distance will be different depending on the mass of the black hole. So, for instance, if this was a stellar mass black hole, maybe something like 5 or 10 times the mass of our sun, then you could get pretty close. You might only need to be a few thousand kilometers away from the Earth before the tidal forces start to rip apart our planet. But if you have a supermassive black hole, which are millions or even billions of times the mass of our sun, then that'll stretch out our earthly doom circle a lot more. It'll be tens of thousands of light years across, so many light years across that it makes no sense to talk about distances in terms of kilometers anymore. And so, when I say that Earth would be ripped apart, I don't mean that it would literally be torn asunder by tidal forces. I mean that the gravity from the black hole would stretch it out, deform it, and tear it away until it's as wide as the entire light year. If you really wanted to make this dumb question make sense, you would have to bring the black hole so close that it overlapped with the solar system and stretched all the way out to Pluto and beyond. But of course, that's impossible. Black holes can't get that big because they lines collapse in on themselves due to their own gravity before they get that massive. If a black hole were to come dangerously close to Earth, it would suck up a lot of stuff and mess us up. End of story. Case closed, right? No, there's another way to think about what it means for a black hole to come close. And this has nothing to do with distance and everything to do with time. I like to think about this in terms of the relationship between light and a black hole. Light takes time to travel. It moves at 300,000 kilometers per second through a vacuum. That's very fast, but not infinite. In fact, it's slow enough that we can actually detect a delay in light from very distant objects. When we see a supernova in a faraway galaxy, for example, we know that the light took hundreds or thousands of years to reach us and so we're seeing it as it was long ago. There's always a delay between the time something happens and the time we see it. The farther away the thing is, the longer the delay is. This is why the universe looks like it's full of fog when you look at it. All of the light traveling from distant stars and galaxies to us has taken so long to reach us that the universe looks like it's filled with an infinite amount of tiny dots, each representing light from a single source. So now let's imagine a black hole. The boundary of a black hole is called the event horizon. And this is the point of no return, the place where the gravitational pull of the black hole is so strong that not even light can escape collapsing into the singularity at the center of the black hole. If light can't escape, then that means no information can escape. Once something crosses the event horizon, it can never tell us anything about what happened next. So the most important thing about a black hole is that it prevents us from ever being able to see what happens after it swallows stuff. So if a black hole came close, we wouldn't actually be able to see it coming, we wouldn't notice until it was too late. And that's where the second part of the story comes in, because just like a black hole sucks in light and prevents us from seeing what happens next, it also sucks in matter. That's because mass warps space-time around it. And the more mass you have, the more space-time gets warped. And the further away from an object you get, the less space-time gets warped. So if you have a massive object like a star, there's a point in space around that star where the force of gravity balances out to zero. We call this the Hill Sphere. It's basically the region of space where the star's gravity is stronger than whatever might be orbiting around the star. For Earth, for example, the Hill Sphere extends out to the Moon. Anything that enters Earth's Hill Sphere gets captured by Earth. Eventually, if you have a black hole, the same thing happens? 
But since a black hole is so much more massive than a star, its Hill sphere extends out much further. In fact, if you have a stellar mass black hole, its Hill sphere can extend halfway out to the nearest star. So, if a black hole were to come close, it would start sucking in stuff long before we even saw it coming. The closer the black hole gets to the Earth, the more massive it would have to be to start sucking in stuff before we ever see it coming. Let us assume that the mass of the black hole is always between 5 and 20 times the mass of our Sun. If it were any more massive than that, then it would be a supermassive black hole, and it would be so big that it would start overlapping with other stars in the solar system. If that happens, then I'd rather not live in this solar system anyway. So let's stick with stellar mass black holes. If the black hole has a mass of about 10 times the mass of our sun, then it would have to be within a couple of light years of the Earth in order to start sucking in stuff before we see it coming. If the black hole were twice as massive, then it would have to be about four light years away. If the black hole were five times more massive, it would have to be about nine light years away, and so on. Now, you might say that this seems pretty safe. Like, it doesn't seem likely that a black hole would ever come that close to us. But you'd be wrong. Stellar black holes are thought to be incredibly common. They're probably lurking between every couple of stars, waiting to suck stuff in. And while they might not be as massive as 20 times the mass of our sun, it's entirely possible that one could pass close enough to Earth to mess us up. At that point, you might think that it doesn't really matter how massive the black hole is. If it gets close enough, it'll start ripping apart the Earth long before it can start sucking stuff in. But you'd be wrong again. There is a massive difference between a black hole that s close enough to rip apart the Earth and a black hole that s close enough to mess with the solar system as a whole. Here's how this works. As the black hole approaches the solar system, the sun will start feeling its gravity. But if it gets close enough, then the black hole's gravity will eventually overcome the sun's gravity. At that point, the black hole will start pulling the planets out of orbit. Eventually, it'll start ripping apart the Earth, but only after it messes up the entire solar system. And if the black hole is massive enough, then it lines mess up the solar system enough to prevent Earth from ever being able to support life again. So, in conclusion, if a black hole came close, we'd probably be doomed. How close is close enough? Well, that depends on how massive the black hole is. But the good news is that if a black hole did come close, we'd have a few years to prepare. Yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.